Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Lewiston's 2016 inauguration ceremony. Would you please rise for the procession of municipal officials? Good evening and welcome to the 2016-2018 Elected Officials Inauguration Ceremony. On behalf of all elected officials, I thank you all for attending tonight. Ceremonies will be, <coughs> ceremonies are pleased, excuse me. We are pleased to have the newly elected officials, city administrator, city clerk, and superintendent Joining, <coughs> joining us all on stage for an evening uh, event. I will now call this meeting to order. Oh, there it is. <coughs> okay, the members, will the members of the Lewiston High School Air Force Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Color Guard please proceed into the hall and present Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will, Colin Ry sorry, will Caitlin Ryder please join us to the, on the stage and sing the national anthem?
the members of the color guard to come to the stage and post the colors. We will now have the Reverend Douglas Taylor of the Backyard Missions do the invocation, offer an invocation. bow our heads in prayer. Lord, there are many thundering voices echoing throughout the halls of democracy tonight. The Donald Trumps and the Hillary Clintons of the political world persuade people with pres presumptuous promises. Such promises are generally not kept by politicians, disappointing the people who placed them in power. Lord, it is the desire and the cry of the people of Lewiston, Maine, to have real leadership. It is more important and more effective that our leaders lead with less rhetoric and more righteousness. Instead of referring to ourselves tonight as Democrat and Republican, liberal or conservative, let the good women and men that sit on this stage be known as honest, courageous, and people of integrity. I am here tonight, Lord, to ask blessing upon our city and our elected leaders. Though I will fulfill this call, I forbid placing a blessing on that which should be cursed. I pray against political correctness in every way, shape, and form. I pray that it be replaced by good old-fashioned common sense. I pray against chameleons who would blend in only to disrupt and to divide. I pray for true colors to rise to the surface. I pray against partisan politics. It's my prayer that the people of this community will become priority and not about political gain. As I stand before you, Almighty God, I call down the baptism of love, mercy, and grace upon our leaders. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, direction, and a spirit of cooperation. The mayor, the city council, the school board must unify to lift up promote and protect the good people of the city of Lewiston. Every taxpayer, our elderly, our youth, the veterans, those who are disabled, our business owners, homeowners, renters, and our homeless should be equally represented at each gathering, each meeting, and each discussion that these leaders participate in. May those who have had, may those who we have elected leave us stronger and more prosperous than we were before their involvement. I offer all of this up in the name of the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the name that is above all names, the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. Thank you, Reverend Taylor. <clears throat> Please be seated. Oh, I can, I can see a lot better now. <laughs> Will the city clerk please collect the election credentials and present the official election results of 2015 City of Lewiston Municipal Election?
I've examined the election credentials and have found everything to be in order. Will the city clerk please introduce the elected officials? The following citizens of Lewiston have been elected to serve as municipal officials for the city of Lewiston. Robert E. McDonald, Mayor. James J. Lyson, City Councilor, Ward 1. Timothy J. LaJoy, City Councilor, Ward 2. Isabel C. Golden, City Councilor, Ward 3. Shane D. Bouchard, City Councilor, Ward 4. Kristen S. Cloutier, City Councilor, Ward 5. Jolene Landry Beam, City Councilor, Ward 6. Michael R. Lachance, City Councilor, Ward 7. Megan D. Parks, School Committee Member at Large. Linda M. Scott, School Committee Member, Ward 1. Paul R. St. Pierre, School Committee Member, Ward 2. Francis N. Gagney, School Committee Member, Ward 3. Benjamin J. Martin, School Committee Member, Ward 4. Richard L. White, School Committee Member, Ward 5. Matthew P. Roy, School Committee Member, Ward 6 and Thomas P. Shannon, School Committee Member, Ward 7. Will the City Clerk please administer the oath of office? I, Robert E. McDonald, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States and, of the state of Maine, and of the State of Maine, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge to, the best of my abilities, to the best of my abilities the duties incumbent on me, the duties incumbent on me as, mayor, as mayor for the city of Lewiston, for the city of Lewiston according to the laws of this state. According to laws of the state and the charter of the city of Lewiston. And the charter of the city of Lewiston. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Will the city clerk please administer the oath of office to the members of the city council? I, James J. Lyson. I, Timothy J. LaJoy. Now, uh, uh, conduct the election of the city council representative to the school committee. I hereby nominate Council Cudia of Ward 5 as a city council member on the school committee. I move that Councilor Cudia of Ward 5 be appointed as the city council representative on the school committee. I second the motion. Okay. It is moved and seconded that the council, that Council Akluki of Ward 5 will be appointed as the City Council Representative on the School Committee. All those in favor, please
please signify by a show of hands. Opposed? It passes unanimously. The city clerk will please administer the oath of office to the members of the school committee. for the president of the city council. Are there any nominations from the city council for members of the council to serve as the city council president? Mr. Mayor, I move that Councilor Cloutier of Ward 5 be nominated as council president. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that Councilor Cloutier of Ward 5 will be nominated as city council president. All those in favor, please signify by a show of hands. Opposed? It's unanimous. <laughs> council President Clucci, you may go to the podium and give us a rousing speech here. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. To begin, I'd like to congratulate Mayor McDonald and the other members of the 2016-2018 City Council and School Committee. I welcome our newest members and I look forward to continued collaboration with our returning members. I know that the next two years will be both personally and professionally rewarding, and I am excited about the diversity that this group of policymakers brings to the table. Each of you has stepped forward to give of your time and your talents, and for that I am especially grateful. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge those elected officials who have served us well in the most recent past. Councilors Kerr, Dote, Dubois, and Libby, and school committee members Burpee, Handy, Mohammed, and Mohammed. Your commitment to this community has not gone, un gone unnoticed, and I am personally so thankful to have served with and learned from each and every one of you. In addition, much work is done on behalf of the city by community members, like yourselves in the audience. Folks like Pauline Gudis and Sandy Markey, who serve on our planning board, and Robert Reed, who serves on our finance committee, among many, many others. These dedicated volunteers give of themselves from the goodness of their hearts without any expectation of reward. Their efforts prove that generosity and kindness are alive and well here in Lewiston. Lastly, I'd like to thank every employee of the City of Lewiston and the Lewiston School Department for the excellent work that they do each and every day. From our firefighters, to our teachers, to our police officers, and our public works department, and everyone in between, we are blessed to have such committed staff. Please know that we appreciate your efforts. I am honored to have been chosen as the 2016-2018 Lewiston City Council President, although I must admit that I'm feeling a little bit pressured given the shoes that I have to fill. Outgoing Council President Mark Kerr has given freely and selflessly of his time and effort for the past six years. And I can honestly say that I have never met another person so willing to look beyond their personal interests to do what is good and right for the residents of this city. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your mentorship, your leadership, your sense of humor, and your friendship. You will be greatly missed. And I hope everyone will join me now in a round of applause for Mark and his service. <laughs> No problem. 
probably kill me in a dark alley back backstage afterwards. Uh, Lewiston is our community. Like many of you, I grew up here, and my husband and I are raising our daughter here. Uh, I actually feel giddy when I walk down Lisbon Street because I'm so overwhelmed by the amazing transformation that is taking place here. I am honored to be a part of that revitalization. I am also honored and humbled by the time and effort being poured into this remarkable place by so many long, long-time residents and newly settled Mainers. It is truly the people that live here that make this city a community, and because of those people, because of all of you, I fall more in love with this city every day. However, Lewiston has not been immune to financial challenges. Unfunded mandates from state and local government have only, raised in, have only resulted in increased costs at the municipal level. Cuts to revenue sharing and the state's failure to meet its own mandate to provide 55% of the funding for local education have furthered this burden. As elected officials, we must continue the fight to get the residents of Lewiston their fair share from Augusta and beyond. We have worked hard to maintain services and to make strategic investments with minimal increases to property taxes. This is difficult, collaborative work, but we must persevere in order to maintain the quality of life that each of us, value, that each of us values so deeply. In spite of these challenges, Lewiston is fortunate to have had inspired leadership that brings us together and moves us forward. The most recently elected mayor and city council are no exception. We must continue to work together to instill pride of place in current residents, attract new residents, and enact a plan for future economic development, both large and small. The expansion of Pettengill Academy, a local leader in early childhood education to the South Park industrial area, the opening of Bare Bones Beer on Lisbon Street, and the continued success of downtown businesses such as the Inn at the Agora and the Agora Grants Event Center, Mother India, Marche, The Vault, Argo Marketing, Hampton Inn, Rails, and Chill Yoga, among many others, speak to the city's commitment to investing in and supporting small business in this community. We are also fortunate to have a skilled economic development staff and a strong Chamber of Commerce and Economic Growth Council, both under new and energetic leadership, to help us navigate larger scale development. Lewiston is blessed with a thriving and growing arts and cultural scene. New endeavors such as the Gypsy Lou Theatre Company and the Union of Maine Visual Artists Lewiston Auburn were created this year by engaged local community members. And more established organizations like LA Arts continue to offer fun and exciting opportunities for residents and visitors alike. The Public Theater was recently voted the best theater in Maine by the Downey's <coughs> Magazine Reader's Choice Poll and features professional equity actors from New York and New England at an affordable ticket price. Many events such as the Great Falls Forum and the Sunday Author Series are hosted by our very own public library. In addition to its entertainment value, the arts have also played a substantial role in economic and community development in Lewiston. Arts and Culture Lewiston Auburn and the recently created Lewiston Arts and Economic Development Group seek to strengthen and support the arts and culture in Lewiston Auburn as a central component of economic and cultural development and to enhance the quality of life for our residents. Several events such as the Art Walk, Sparkle Sunday, at which my wallet may have sparkled a little too much, uh, and the newly expanded Festival of Arts and Lights were all developed to attain this goal and were a smashing success. As ambassadors of Lewiston, I invite all of you to come out to support these wonderful offerings and to share them far and wide with your friends and family. Recreation is another priority here. During my tenure on the council, the city has, developed to has helped to establish a park at the site of the old Pettengill School and to build an amphitheater at Samard Payne Park, which hosts the Great Falls Balloon Festival each year. We also work to create the Androscoggin Greenway Path that begins at Sunnyside Park in Lewiston and to encourage, encourage the use of the Androscoggin River as a site for canoeing, kayaking, and various other water activities. I'm excited by the potential we have still yet to realize in relation to the river and the canals, and I look forward to future development and utilization of these incredible resources. With all the amazing things happening here, we must also ensure that we continue to provide safe, affordable, and healthy ho housing options for everyone. This can, includes continuing our work around lead poisoning prevention, and thinking creatively with property owners, residents, and developers about new, more welcoming housing in many of our historical downtown properties. Not only is it important for us to address these issues for the health and safety of current residents of our community, but it makes good economic sense as well. We need to improve our downtown housing stock if we are ever going to attract new businesses and residents. Lewiston-Auburn was the 17th community to become a green and healthy homes initiative site and we have spent the last two years working to break the link between unhealthy homes and unhealthy children by replacing standalone housing intervention programs with an integrated whole house approach. The city has worked with Healthy Androscoggin, the State of Maine Lead Program, and the Lewiston-Auburn Public Health Committee to raise awareness 
about the high incidence of childhood lead poisonings within the cities and strategies for, for prevention. While we currently have loan and lead abatement grant programs in place to assist property owners, the expansion of cooperative housing and mixed income developments, which have already proven successful in downtown Lewiston, is worth exploring. And I look forward to those conversations in the years to come. As the council representative to the school committee, it has been my pleasure to work with the dedicated team at Lewiston Public Schools, which consists of school committee members, administrators, teachers, staff, parents, and students. Research has shown that high school graduates who have had access to a quality education throughout their primary and secondary school careers are more likely to be active and productive members of our society, to find gainful employment, and to have stable families. They are also less, less likely to commit serious crimes, to place high demands on our public health care system, and to be enrolled in social welfare programs. Investing in education makes sense for everyone, not just those with children in the public school system. It is far more cost effective than paying for the social and economic consequences of underfunded, low quality schools. Great strides have been made by every member of our public school system team, whether it be the championship win by the boys high school soccer team, the establishment of the educator supply closet by Lewiston High School parent Tina Hutchinson, or the continued commitment of faculty like Jen Carter, who runs the 21st century program at the middle and high schools. I am excited to work alongside the newly elected school committee chairperson. Several other committee members and I have talked extensively over the past year about how we might create a more collaborative and robust relationship between the Lewiston City Council and the Lewiston School Committee that extends beyond the budget season. Bringing those conversations to fruition is an exhilarating prospect. Lastly, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the work being done by the various nonprofit organizations we have here in Lewiston. Organizations like the Franco Center and Museum LA, who give new life to our culture and heritage. Organizations like the Trinity Jubilee Center and Soup Kitchen, New Beginnings and Safe Voices, who literally give life to our most vulnerable populations. And organizations like the YWCA, the Root Cellar, and Maine Community Integration, among many, many others, who provide support and services to youth and families that allow them to be active and engaged citizens. We have much to be proud of and much left to accomplish. Lewiston has truly become a city of opportunity for many of us. It is a vibrant community, rich in history and heritage. Its residents are doers, dreamers, caring, and ingenious individuals. Our diversity is our strength. Whether you are a new or lifelong resident, I invo invite you all to join me in working together to build upon a legacy that all of our children can be proud of. In closing, I'd like to ask you all two questions. What will you do to leave this place better than you found it? And what mark will you leave on Lewiston? Thank you. Is that my speech? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll call upon schools. Superintendent William Webster to conduct the nomination and election of the school committee chairperson. Mr. Superintendent. I recognize school committee member St. Pierre. I move that chair committee, uh, that school committee member Linda Scott be nominated as school chair committee person. Webster. School committee member Shannon. With great expectations, far better than Mr. Dickens, I happily second. It has been moved and seconded that school committee member Scott of Ward 1 be named chairperson of the Lewiston School Committee. All those in favor of Linda Scott being named chairperson of the Lewiston School Committee, please signify by your hands. All those opposed, it is unanimous. Lewiston School Committee member Scott has been named chairperson of the Lewiston School Committee. Chairperson Scott, please proceed to the podium for your remarks.
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Mayor McDonald, city councilors, school board members, honored guests, I thank you very much for joining us this evening. I would like to acknowledge a special thank you to my colleagues on the school board for having the confidence to elect me as your new school board chair, and a heartfelt thank you to my family who are always there to support me. I want to congratulate our newest board members on your election win and look forward to your new energy and ideas. And to our returning members, your knowledge and experience are an invaluable asset to myself and our whole school department, and I thank you. We have many challenges facing us, from new federal mandates with Every Student Succeeds Act, to new state law requiring all students must graduate with a proficiency-based diploma. We will be facing a tough budget season, and one of our goals of raising graduation rates have yet still to be met. I truly believe we have a school board that is up to meeting these challenges and will work diligently to accomplish our mission statement of ensuring academic and civic success. As a school board, these challenges will always be present, but I want to put forth a new challenge. That is to focus on the positives of our school department. I want to see on the front page of the newspaper all the wonderful things that are happening in our schools every day from our phenomenal teachers who go above and beyond to educate our children, to our outstanding students who academically and athletically are winning championships and scholarships, who are being accepted to Ivy League colleges and volunteering to help their fellow classmates in times of need. Let's recognize our parents who volunteer countless hours to our PTOs and booster clubs and help out in our schools and classrooms. We have a school system to be proud of, and I believe it's time we focus as much on that pride as we do the policy and governance role of the school board. By making it our priority to focus on success, I'm confident we will breed success. One of the first things I will be doing as the board chair is adding to the beginning of each board meeting a moment of recognition where a student, teacher, staff member, or parent will be named a recipient of appreciation and publicly be recognized by the school board for their work and achievement. Another challenge we face is the need to broaden our communication. Parents, staff, and community members want to know what is happening in our schools. We've seen more and more parents becoming involved in our board meetings, and just recently we have started taping our meetings, bringing them to a broader audience. These are great things, but more needs to be done and I believe this board is very much in favor of better communication with our community. I believe with full collaboration amongst ourselves, along with our teachers, staff, parents, and students, these challenges can be met. And together, we can have a school system we can all be proud of. I end tonight with a quote from Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We may not be able to prepare the future for our children, but we can at least prepare our children for the future. Thank you very much. We will now enjoy a musical performance by the Lewiston High School chamber singer, strike that, choir. Will the members of the choir please Come up to the stage.
And that's some of the hidden jewels we have here, and we have a lot more like that. They are, they are very good and they make this city proud. Good evening. I would like to thank the Lewiston voters for re-electing me to a third term as their mayor. I am honored by the confidence bestowed in me, and today I am more committed to this community <clears throat> and its residents than ever before. I'd also like to thank my wife, Ginny, for her continued support. They say that behind every successful man, there is a good woman and she is definitely that. I'd also like to just take a second here, go off script. Uh, I'm very happy tonight. I have a person here that I've known for 69, almost 69 years, and I'm so glad he's here tonight, my Uncle Bill Lawrence. Uh, And one other person, the reason I'm standing up here tonight and I've been here for three different times is because right on the front row is Gene Tardif, and he's uh, done a very good job getting me elected as mayor. <laughs> my, appreciation of, my appreciation also goes to those on the council and school committee who concluded their terms this evening. And I offer them a, and I offer a warm welcome to those newly elected to serve. The city of Lewiston continues to move forward due to, the, due to the collaborative effort of engaged residents, elected officials, and municipal staff, all of whom are proud of our heritage, excited about the Lewiston of today, and share a vision for the Lewiston of the future. We are a diverse community and one we are a diverse community, and one we are all extremely proud of. I am very optimistic about the future. I often use the words, enough is enough. I'd like to modify that tonight. Today, enough is not enough. Avoiding negative talk about Lewiston is not enough. We must talk, even shout, about what Lewiston has to offer. We must become our own best cheerleaders. If we don't believe in ourselves and our potential, no one else will. Police Chief Michael Bouzier recently made a presentation at the Interscoggin County Chamber of Commerce. He encouraged its members to be positive ambassadors for Lewiston. Tonight, I am asking all members of our community to do the same, to be positive, we must both reflect upon our successes and challenges and challenge ourselves for the future. I'd like to do that tonight. One focus of the recent campaign was housing conditions in downtown Lewiston. This included derogatory comments about some landlords. While I don't deny that the conditions of some buildings are poor, I would urge those who have complaints to approach our code enforcement and fire prevention personnel who, I guarantee, will act upon them. Negative headlines on the front page of the newspaper or the six o'clock news are self-defeating. They reinforce the area's stereotype and dissuade hardworking individuals and families from seeking housing there. Housing remains a major issue while we've made great strides in addressing the worst of it, enough is not enough. Our older multi-family <clears throat> housing stock is a significant resource that can and should provide safe housing for those in our workforce who, while they work hard and do important work, may not earn high salaries. We can, we can assure that quality workforce housing is available by working in partnership with building owners um, towards safer, well-maintained properties. If all of us 
tenants, landlords, and government officials work to improve not just the reality, but the perception of our neighborhoods, our priority to provide safe and affordable housing will be achieved. But be assured, enough is not enough. And I will continue to support our efforts to demolish properties that are in poor condition and do not and are not economically viable. I will push to implement the changes recently recommended by the Downtown Building Task Force. They include focusing city assistance on buildings that can be successful, supporting the addition of code enforcement and fire prevention staff, encouraging a city enforcement posture that works with building owners who cooperate with us but takes a firm stance against those who don't. Working with the council to amend our ordinances where necessary to ensure that the city has the need, needed authority to take immediate steps when grave hazards are found. Educating building owners about the availability of assistance programs, including the $3.4 million federal grant we recently received <clears throat> as part of the Lead Hazard Control and Green and Healthy Homes Initiative. Supporting state legislation that will address tenant issues and hold tenants accountable for damages to units or disabling smoke detectors. Working with Chief Bouzier and his department as they continue to make all of Lewiston, including the downtown, among the safest, biggest cities in Maine. We also must reach out to our major institutions, such as the hospitals and Bates College, to work with them towards providing quality housing, both in our downtown and near these institutions. For doctors, housing for doctors, nurses, professors, and other professionals. We have a dynamic job-creating triangle reaching from downtown with TD Bank, Argo Marketing, and others, to Central Maine Medical Center, to Bates College, to St. Mary's Regional Medical Center. These areas and their adjacent neighborhoods are ideal locations for those working at all salary levels at these institutions to find quality housing. If we work with these institutions and our development community to provide the housing these groups want, quality, resident, quality residential developments within our downtown have shown that they can attract tenants who can pay market rents. And there is no reason such developments can spread to other areas. The lofts at Bates Mill made history in Lewiston as the first residential project in one of our historical mills. This project provided a tremendous boost to the city's riverfront island master plan. But again, enough is not enough. We've proven that quality housing is essential to revitalize our downtown. We must provide more of it. People living in our downtown contribute to new energy, an increased sense of community, activity after 5 p.m., a solid foundation for retail, and to the success of restaurants, coffee shops, service businesses, and breweries. We are, re <clears throat> we are recreating our downtown, but enough is not enough. As mayor, I will continue to advocate for the extension of passenger rail service to Lewiston and Auburn. Such service would be a long-term shot in the arm, enhance, enhancing LA's standing as a destination and making our community, including our downtown, a more desirable location to live with quick access to Portland, Southern Maine, and Boston. Passenger rail will spur the kind of development we need and want and adjacent to the, st and adjacent to the station. And that station should be the former main central terminal on Bates Street. Rail service would dramatically improve not only the immediate station area, 
but the adjacent Sunnyside neighborhood, a hidden jewel fronting the Androscoggin River. We are a service center, and Lewiston Auburn, our home to revitalize downtowns, vast arts and cultural events, quality pre-K through grade 12 schools, outstanding post-secondary schools, delicious restaurants, tight-knit neighborhoods, and many recreational opportunities. This community is thriving, and we can no longer be ignored in regards to passenger rail. Over the last four years, our economy has improved and jobs have grown, but enough is not enough. We must become even more aggressive in our economic development efforts. The Lewiston Economic Growth Council is under new visionary leadership, having produced an economic development strategy for our region. We must now all get on board to energetically implement it. We must reach out to Maine and the world and let them know there is no better place or more economically viable place than Lewiston and Auburn to do business, raise a family, and enjoy life. Our recent initiative in support of development at Exit 80 will serve as a catalyst, not only <coughs> developing one of the last remaining undeveloped commercial industrial areas in Lewiston, but encourage redevelopment along Lisbon Street, particularly from Alfred Plourd Parkway south towards Lisbon, and enhancing retail development here. Manufacturing remains alive and well in Lewiston. But enough is not enough. The recent $6 million investment by Systems Logistics is a testament to our community as a place where innovative products continue to be developed and produced. Systematic <coughs> Systems Logistics Modula, high-tech vertical lift storage system, and warehouse carousels are stellar. And we are proud that this global company makes its products here in Lewiston. Lewiston has always made things, and we are <coughs> making things today. Modular and other advanced manufacturers offer promising futures for those already employed, as well as opportunities for youth who inspire to work with both their hands and their minds. Implementing the Riverfront Island Master Plan must continue. The presence of the Hampton Inn, the redesigned entrance to Samad Payne Memorial Park, and the other outdoor and the new outdoor amphitheater are tremendous steps forward. But here, enough is not enough. Continuing to invest in this plan will result in job creation and economic activity. The amenities provided by quality open space, water access, and our canal systems are an effective economic development tool attracting new families and individuals to experience all that we have to offer. I am particularly excited about working to expand this area's trail system by connecting our new greenway on the west to Riverfront Island and continuing downriver to, into Lisbon and beyond. I will also continue to make a huge, I will also continue to be a huge proponent of the development of Museum LA. Lewiston has a long history of folks coming here for a better life. Many arriving at the Grand Trunk Depot, which has been reclaimed and transformed into Rails Restaurant as part of our riverfront efforts. Those immigrants, like our current immigrants, have incredible stories. They built the magnificent Basilica St. Peter and Paul with their hard work their hard-earned nickels and dimes. They were artisans and manufactured products desired worldwide. Their stories and our <coughs> heritage must be preserved through the efforts of Museum LA. Join me in the effort to showcase our history on a grand scale. We have a lot to be proud of.
In closing, I will continue to fight for welfare reform. Recent changes in the law are starting to hold welfare recipients more accountable and reducing the burden on our taxpayers. But enough is not enough. While we must continue to aid those who truly need a hand up, we must hold those we help accountable to do their part to improve their lives and their economic conditions. We must be compassionate, but we must also demand accountability. To do this, future reforms are needed, and we must partner with state government to succeed. Welfare can no longer be accepted as a long-term, even generational way of life. Whenever possible, it must be short-term and designed to restore, not replace, self-sufficiency. We have taken great strides over the last few years. The image and the reality of Lewiston are changing, but enough is not enough. It's time to shout our pride. Housing has improved, but enough, again, is not enough. We must do more. Downtown and our riverfront are being recreated, but enough is not enough. We must drive our plan, we must drive our plans and visions forward. Our economy has improved, but enough is not enough. We must become even more aggressive in pursuing growth, investment, and good jobs. We've begun to, we've begun to reform welfare, but enough is not enough. Generational welfare must end and those we assist must be held accountable. We've accomplished a lot over the last four years, and we did it together. With your help and your commitment to your, and your support, we can do even more in the next two. Thank you for attending this evening. Let us pledge to one another that we will continue to work together as we pursue what's best for our entire community and all of our residents. Thank you. Monsignor Mark Karen of the Prince of Peace Parish and Rabbi Shiruli Dresner of the Temple Shalom Synagogue Center please come forward to offer the benediction. When King Solomon entered upon his reign over the people of Israel, he dared ask God for but one thing, the wisdom necessary. This is the praise of wisdom from the Jewish and Christian scriptures and a prayer asking the blessing of God's wisdom upon us all. Wisdom is a spirit intelligent, unique, clear, and certain, loving the good, kindly, all-powerful, all-seeing, tranquil. For wisdom is an aura of the might of God. Therefore, nothing that is sullied enters into her. For she is the reflection of eternal light, the mirror of the power of God, the image of God's goodness, and she can do all things and renews all things. And passing into holy souls from age to age, she produces friends of God and prophets, for those who dwell with wisdom are beloved of God. O oh, wisdom, be with us in our joy tonight. Accompany us in our going forth from this place. Welcome us when we will be at rest. Amen. Thank you, Monsignor Karen. <clears throat> our celebration is almost complete. We invite everyone to please join the reception downstairs in the Heritage Hall. <laughs> Oh, the rabbi, oh, it's you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, and see if you wore a different color, I could have seen you in shadows. <laughs>
Mayor McDonald, committee members and council members, I would like to say on behalf of the entire Lewiston Auburn Jewish community that it is a great privilege and an honor to be asked to deliver a benediction on this suspicious occasion. Thank you. The Jewish tradition, we have a special blessing that we chant when God gives us the opportunity to do good works. Joining me in chanting this blessing are my wonderful wife, Lisa Mayer, who has recently joined the staff of the development office at St. Mary's Regional Hospital, and my equally wonderful stepson, Zachary Mayer. depends in large measure on the wisdom and courage of our leaders. We pray that our leaders have the wisdom to seek and find solutions to the challenges that we face and the courage to implement them. We pray that they use their powers wisely and well. We pray that our leaders practice compassion, remembering that all human beings are created in the image of God, that each human life is valuable and sacred. We pray that our leaders practice justice, striving for the good of all, all the people of our society, all the people of God's earth. We pray that our leaders recognize the unique opportunity they have been given to make a difference in the world and that they rise above their backgrounds and their limitations and use that opportunity with wisdom and courage. We pray that our leaders reflect in their policies and decisions the noble ideals that we all share. We pray that you, God, stand beside them and guide them through the night with a light from above. May your blessings be with them. Downstairs and for some refreshments. <clears throat> All in favor of it. Uh, Councilor Colucci, do you have a, have a motion? 
Mr. Mayor, I move that we adjourn. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Do I hear anybody opposed? I didn't think so. Okay, we're adjourned. And please join us in the reception downstairs.